Hello super users. So in this lesson, we're going to get started with learning how to create macros in Keyboard Maestro. Now I don't know how experienced any of you are with creating macros in Keyboard Maestro. So we're going to start with a very simple macro. That way you can really get the basics and then we'll build up the fundamentals and the usefulness from there. So we're going to start off by creating a macro that just opens up the add measures dialog box so you can add new measures to your piece. The traditional way you would do this in finale is you would select any measure you want, right click and add measures and you'd get this dialog box. Alternatively, you can go up here to edit and then add measures and you'll also get that dialog box. And so we're gonna just create a very simple macro that does this for us. So let's go over to Keyboard Maestro and as you can see, I have disabled all my macros, so I can start from scratch with you. So first, let's just create a macro group. You can come down here to the lower left-hand corner and hit the plus sign, and we're gonna call this macro group Finale, just because this is gonna house a lot of our Finale macros. Now, of course, we want to enable it, but we don't want it to be in all applications. We only want it to be in Finale, so select Available in These Applications, plus sign, Finale. If you aren't seeing Finale in this drop-down menu, the easiest way to get it here is just to open up the program and then you'll be able to see it. And that's it. This macro group, like I said, is going to group a lot of our macros together. And then we actually create the macros inside of this macro group. So let's create our first macro. Come down here to this plus sign and hit plus for add macro. We can title this. So let's just title this add measures. And then there's two parts to every single macro. First, we trigger the macro with some sort of trigger, and then we actually execute a bunch of actions. So for a trigger, the one you're gonna use most often is a hotkey trigger, and we can use any keyboard shortcut we want, but let's just say for fun, Command Shift M. And all you have to do to set it is just highlight this, and then press the keyboard shortcut you want. And we want to make sure it's as pressed of course, we can do all these other options we want. Then for the action, this is what the macro is actually going to do. So we're going to select New Action, which will then bring us to this dialog box with a bunch of different actions. In the search menu, we're going to search for Menu, and then click on Select or Show a Menu Item. You can either double click it or you can drag it over here. Then to actually create this Add Measures dialog box, but instead of right clicking, what we're gonna use with the macro is we're gonna have it select the menu item. So we're gonna have it come up here to edit and then add measures to pop up the dialog box. So now that we have this action here, we're gonna go over here to menu to select the menu item, go down here to finale, that's just the application finale. And then we have all the menu items in finale. So we wanna to go to edit and then add measures. And that's it, we have a fully completed macro. So if you go over here to Finale, and if we select Command-Shift-M, it'll pop up this menu dialog box. So we can then say four measures, hit Enter, and it will add four measures at the end of the piece. Again, Command-Shift-M, select any number you want, like 10 measures, and it adds 10 measures to the end of the piece. But we can do more advanced macros than that to give us more functionality. For instance, in Finale, you may have noticed that whenever you delete any sort of music, it just happens to leave some items like dynamics there even after you delete the note. It's just there visually, so like if we were to now move around the page, it disappears. But that can be annoying. So let's create another macro to fix that. And so let's create a new macro down here. Remember, it's the plus sign. And we're going to call this delete music because all this is doing is deleting music as you normally would. New trigger, hotkey trigger. Let's just override the, the delete key so it happens automatically and we don't even notice it new action. And as you may have guessed, there's many different actions you can choose from. Another one you can use is called type a keystroke. So if we search for keystroke, type a keystroke, and we can have this run delete. That way it still deletes like we normally do, but we can actually make this have a second step of updating the layout, which is command U. That way, if you go back here, whenever we delete music, it not only deletes the music, but also updates the layout. So if you hit delete, it now looks correctly, which that can be really useful. And I think you might be able to start seeing that you can add as many actions you want here and eventually create really advanced keyboard maestro macros 
that can do some really useful things in a fraction of the time that it would take you to do it by hand. But just for completeness, I want you to know that this trigger doesn't simply have to be a hotkey or a keyboard shortcut or anything that's triggered by the keyboard. There are many other triggers you can have. For instance, another macro that I have just updates the layout whenever I switch to Finale. Because if you haven't noticed, I like using Finale in full screen mode, and this can at times do some funky things with the layout. So whenever I switch over, especially like this going between screens, it really helps update the layout automatically. So to do that, we're just going to create another macro, hit the plus sign, and we're going to call this update layout when switching to finale. It can You can call this whatever you want. This is just the name I thought of right now. New trigger, instead of hockey trigger, we're actually going to use an is focused window trigger and leave it as the focused window title changes. So basically what this means is anytime we move over to finale, this macro will then run. So for new action, again, we could type the keystroke and command U to update the layout. And so if we move over into finale, the layout was automatically updated. And that's really cool. So you can start to see by now that with Keyboard Maestro macros, we can use a variety of different triggers to do things either automatically or when we use a keyboard shortcut to do any number of actions. And there are literally over a hundred different things we can do with Keyboard Maestro. So in the next lesson, we're going to create a bunch of macros that I'm calling the layer suite that you can use to manipulate layers quickly and easily. And in the process, we're going to learn several different types of actions we can use to really start to leverage Finale in Keyboard Maestro.